Hello everybody, my name is Joelle Simone Anthony. Welcome to my channel if you have not visited before and if you have, welcome back. Again, my name is Joelle Simone Anthony. I'm also known as the Grave Woman. And today in this segment or installment of Death at the Movies, I will be discussing the movie Bumblebee. Now, I got the chance to see the movie Bumblebee and I was really impressed with it and thought that the story was absolutely beautiful. So today I'll be basically sharing a summary of the movie and discussing the loss and grief that I saw reflected in the film. Go ahead and talk about the grief and loss that were depicted in the film Bumblebee. Now, as always, I have my handy dandy notes right here. So if you see me looking away from the camera, that's why. But I'm gonna start off by talking a, a little bit about Charlie. Now, Charlie's father was her best friend. And as we saw in the movie, her father died, as she explained, from an unexpected heart attack. Not only was Charlie's father her best friend, he also was her biggest support. After her father's death from the film, we can see that her mother has started a new relationship and has remarried and that her mom and her little brother seem to have a very close-knit relationship with her mother's new love interest. And unfortunately, Charlie didn't find it as easy to move on. Charlie ends up becoming obs almost obsessed with the pastime that she and her father uh, participated in together, which was working on old cars and listening to music. We saw in the beginning of the movie that Charlie woke up to music every morning and just wanted to block everything out. The one thing that she did acknowledge about her current reality was the photo that she had on her nightstand or on her dresser of she and her father so she would you know when she went into the kitchen and talked to her mom and her stepfather and her little brother she didn't even say good morning but she did say good morning dad to the picture and i thought that that was very telling that she really missed her dad a lot so that set the tone and let us know a little bit about what charlie was going through so her father's death and journey with grief caused her to become uninterested in things that she was once interested in and also very good at. There was a scene um, in the movie where she actually threw away a box of trophies and we find out later on in the movie that she was a great diver at one time. So she was trying to get rid of anything that reminded her of her dad and she becomes emotionally isolated and stuck until she happens across a car that is given to her on her 18th birthday. Now I want to talk a little bit about Charlie's experience with grief and how we see those in our everyday life or that experience in our everyday life. When we're grieving a lot of times we can't invest the energy in what we consider at that time to be almost useless things. Um, some people unlike Charlie want to stay away from the things that they did with the people who they who they've lost while people much like Charlie herself become even more involved with those things so I thought that that really was a great picture depicting how um, people grieve differently um, her mom invested in falling a lot invested her energy in falling in love again and wasn't afraid of being hurt again the little brother I'm assuming just was kind of going with the flow and Charlie you know she wasn't able to move on as quickly so I felt as if that was a really really good and realistic depiction of how grief affects everyone differently the next thing or the next character that I want to talk about from the movie is Bumblebee now Bumblebee had to evacuate his home and fight his way to a completely new planet. Not a new state, not a new area on his planet, but a completely brand new planet. So imagine you're a Autobot and you've never been to Earth before. And when you get here on Earth, the first thing that you have to do is fight. So that instilled a lot of fear and a lot of uncertainty about his surroundings and him just on his arrival, upon his arrival. Um, when discovered by Charlie, Bumblebee was very afraid, again, because his first introduction and interaction with human beings was being attacked because he was so different. He was automatically presumed to be a danger because he was, you know, a machine and 
he entered into the atmosphere like a comet and because those who witnessed that were afraid as humans it was their natural instinct to fight or fight or flee because the soldier that found him was not the type of personality to flee it automatically turned into a fight so when he met Charlie he was extremely afraid now in the scene where Bumblebee lands on Earth and is fighting against the military personnel and the Decepticon that follows him into our atmosphere, he loses his voice. Um, I believe this is significant because many times when we're grieving, we lose the ability to, the ability or the desire, honestly, to clearly articulate exactly what it is that we're feeling. Grief is an emotion that is hard to describe. I mean, I can describe the stages of grief. I can just describe the task of mourning and things like that. But how do you put into words to a complete stranger, even someone who didn't have the relationship that you had with the person who's lost exactly how you're feeling? So it was very, very, very significant that he lost his voice. Um, Charlie and Bumblebee's connection was so meaningful because they found a way to communicate with each other in a mutual language without words. And that relationship and that language was built upon common loss. Maybe Bumblebee hadn't lost a father, but he had lost his father figure um, by having to flee his home planet um, and his father figure being Optimus Prime. He was sent to this planet as a form of protection by Optimus Prime, but he had no idea when Optimus Prime would be coming to Earth along with the other um, Autobots to, you know, do what they had to do. Once Charlie installed a new radio into Bumblebee, Bumblebee found his own way and own language of communicating with um, Charlie which was music and that communication was so beautiful because as we saw when uh, Charlie and Bumblebee were in the garage she explained to him once he touched the records and she kind of startled him and told him not to touch those that she and her father basically would listen to old records and fix the cars because it would make the cars feel better. So once he had that new radio installed, I honestly feel as if that was his way of soothing Charlie and letting her know that she was going to be okay and making her better through communicating her, with her through lyrics and music. So I thought that was very interesting and very beautiful. On the flip side, because Bumblebee had no voice, it made Charlie very comfortable and able to communicate with him in a way that she was not able to communicate with anyone else around her. It seemed as if everyone around her, her mother, her boss, the jerks at school, um, her little brother, her stepfather, everybody was telling her what she needed to feel, what she needed to do, how she should do things, why she shouldn't be doing this or why she shouldn't be doing that. I saw examples of that several times within the film where, you know, her stepfather gave her the book about smiling on her birthday and told her that she would be able to make more friends if she smiled or she should be smiling because it would make her a happier person. We saw that um, display when her mother gave her the helmet and was telling her it's so dangerous you're out here on this bike you know you should be wearing a helmet because it'll make me feel better her little brother teasing her and kind of being like you know doing what little siblings or younger siblings do making her feel like you know you should be paying attention to me instead of feeling and sulking and doing whatever it is that you're doing or you know the boss telling her that she should be going and stealing sticks um, from the banana fry, the fried banana hut, instead of just sitting around at the job. So the fact that Bumblebee didn't have a voice made him a listening ear for Charlie, which is truly what she needed at that time. And because he was there and listening and emotionally available to her, she was able to open up and express things that she had not been able to express before. There was also a level of mutual loss and grief displayed in Charlie and 
Bumblebee's relationship and particularly the end of their relationship at the end of the movie where Charlie is basically dropping Bumblebee off and letting him know that you know it's too dangerous for her to stay with him because he's an Autobot and she's a human and that represented to me a season of life many times when we're grieving or we've lost someone we form relationships that we would not have normally formed whether they be with other people who are experiencing the similar losses to us or with a therapist and charlie's relationship not on charlie's relationship with bumblebee not only reminded me of a season but it also reminded me a little bit of therapy because they both knew that the relationship needed to end because they had gotten all that they could from each other. She had helped him as much as she could when fighting the Decepticons, as much as she could physically and as a human. And he had helped her as much as he could being a robot by being there for her emotionally. And I really thought that it was beautiful how it ended and it was represented to me and solidified because Charlie you know she opened up and she began communicating more with her family she opened up and started having a dialect with her stepfather who she was completely avoiding and she just showed vulnerability and being willing to open up to her neighbor Mimo and then on the other hand when we saw Bumblebee go from this little cute Volkswagen Beetle to this strong powerful fast and aggressive Corvette it was like they both matured and had gone through the metaphor metamorphosis that they needed to go through collectively to become the individuals that they needed to be. And a lot of times we see that same type of relationship mimicked again, like I said, in therapy after a loss or just in relationships that we build in the season following a loss while we're grieving. And I really thought that that was a beautiful depiction of that. So kudos to the producers, writers, and everybody who came up with that. That was absolutely amazing and just visually compelling and tied everything together. Now, there is one more type of death that was depicted in the, the film Bumblebee. And it's more of a personal opinion and maybe, you know, you guys out there may not feel this way and that's okay. But this is what I saw and it, what I'm talking about is the death of society as we know it. Um, there were a lot of things in there that almost felt like programming to me. Like, okay, in the first scene when Optimus Prime says, our people are going to die. Now, this is clearly a machine saying that our people are going to die. And I believe that, you know, films like this, they foreshadow certain things. Um, and this is the conspiracy theorist in me coming out, but um, they foreshadow certain things. And to hear a machine say, refer to itself as a person and a group of machines referred to as people lets me know that, you know, maybe, I don't want to say they, but maybe we are becoming too familiar and too comfortable with machines and identifying with them as human. Um, I'm talking to a camera right now, but this camera can't talk back. But in the film, this camera could have been considered a person. So that was very interesting to me. Um, it also depicted, the film also depicted, you know, the military being dependent upon AI and a machine for information and for guidance and to get more than what we as humans would have been capable of getting from the universe and from other planets and things like that. So that was interesting. And you also saw the government losing control in the AI of the AI and the machines in this film um, and the machines and AI turning on us the humans so that was really interesting and I think a lot of movies today are depicting you know artificial intelligence with human emotions and human you know characteristics and it seems like entertainment but at the same time I think our minds are being conditioned 
to kind of usher in a new type of society. What that society is developed for, I'm not sure, but it's just something that I'm noticing in films like this and other films about transhumanism, which we can talk about a little bit later on. But I would like to know what you guys think about the movie Bumblebee and are we being groomed for some type of transhumanistic mechanical AI society? I'd like to hear your opinions. I'd love to hear what you thought about the movie and if you have some more to add about the grief and loss reflected in the movie Bumblebee. As, as always, my name is Joelle Simone Anthony. I'm also known as The Grave Woman. Please be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like, share, and comment. Also be, be sure to visit my website www.thegravewoman.com and please know that you can also find me on social media or on Google at The Grave Woman. Live life, love hard, and I'll talk to you next time.